One thing that I do a lot of times is like I'll sketch and I'll make sure my pencil doesn't stop, right? And then that's when the subconscious, you know, artistic vomit comes out in these beautiful ways. So what should I draw? You can I add on other people's sketches? No, I just. <laughs> it's like I'll fix this for you, Ian. Ooh. I could go right in the middle. Uh, I'll just keep it in order. Do a little tiny one. What? Hi. <laughs> this sketchbook I just you know, started. It's, it's kind of like my idea sketchbook. The sketches inside, they're not like the most like detailed or anything like that, but for me, it's, it's all about the idea. And then this one is kind of like an idea. This little mouse has had a tough life and uh, his fairy godmother has come, so hopefully things get better. So this one is like a really old plant person like uh, little plant people drawings that I do in, in a lot of my YouTube videos. This guy's really cool because he's meditating so much that his little roots have levitated him. And then all the little uh, forest creatures, they really dig that and they really respect him. So they gather around and start meditating around him. So sometimes things work like this one. I, I feel like this idea really works well. And if it really works well, then perhaps I'll paint it later. This one is just a little pen drawing with a little bit of pencil. It's about this character kind of just traveling into danger. He knows there's danger and, and what's behind the corner? I don't know, I don't know. But it's all about the emotional impact of the idea. When I was working um, in a television studio before I started my own studio, uh, I would draw a lot, you know, and I was the computer guy, but I would draw a lot anyways. And then they took away my pencils and said, stop drawing. You know, you're not gonna use your pencils anymore. You only get a pen. So I could just focus on work. And you know, it's true. I was totally slacking. I didn't <laughs> love the job or anything, but that started my whole entire love of drawing with a pen because they took away my pencils. <laughs> and so this is like an example of just random doodling of just random things. This one is about um, this friendly furry animal where all the other animals take advantage of him and steal his various organs. <laughs> and, you know, the last one is this frog stealing his heart. And I kind of imagined once the frog goes far enough, the cords, you know, the, the veins uh, snap, the creature dies. <laughs> this furry creature dies. I know, like, what's wrong with me? Sometimes I, you know, it's just a furry creature. Why can't I leave him alone? This is interesting though. These are, these are little thoughts, right? So I work out little tiny thoughts, little tiny thumbnails, and if I like them, I'll do a bigger sketch. Yeah, so this one right here, I was just thinking that it would be kind of like, there's another little guy hiding behind him, scared of this one. You know, kind of like when kids are kind of fighting or playing with each other and then, one runs to a grown-up and hides behind the grown-up. That's kind of the idea. This one kind of felt like a slightly bigger one, tiny one. That's my big bro. That's me. I guess I got to include both parents <laughs> make it fair. You know, people have different types of parents. My parents kept it real a lot of times. And my mom, you know, she's, she's artistic. And I would say, hey, mom, check out this drawing I did. And she'll be like, yeah, but the, you know, perspective isn't right. Or this, this doesn't look realistic. And, you know, I'm like five. <laughs> and, and I'm like, perspective? <laughs> you know, and it wasn't until I was like in my 20s something where their compliments actually sounded genuine. So you have to kind of protect yourself from just going, okay, it's all right. You know, this bad drawing, eh, it's all right. And so that's how I feel about my bad drawings. It's definitely not about the finished product for me. I'm very unattached to my art. It's more like I'm attached to the process of making the art. When it's done, I forget about it, unless it has a memory attached to it, like we were talking about before. So a lot of my sketchbooks, they'll have groceries I need to buy, or just random 
super random stuff. I'm calculating something. I'll just, you know, write down the numbers. And I probably shouldn't do that, you know, because it kind of ruins the drawing, I guess. And nobody will want it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a lot of times, like I said, I don't know what I'm drawing. You know, and so that, that practice of just not stopping your pencil, a lot of times it's like you finish it and you're just like, why did I draw that? You know, like, it's, sometimes it's a failure, sometimes it's not. Like this one is a total failure. I don't know what that is. But I think it's cool that way. I've been doing a lot of frogs more and more. I don't know what that means. This one is about, you know, like these two guys, the turtle, the frog, and they're about to battle this little bird. And it's like, they need both of them to battle this bird. It's like, what's up with the bird? What does it know? <laughs> kind of like you can't judge a book by its cover. This one actually, it started off with just shapes. Big guy, a small guy. And, you know, they're both drinking coffee because I was drinking coffee. Yeah, so these ones, I didn't really feel as much of an emotional kind of impact with them. So I just started sketching random people that were nearby. For me, like the highest level of art is all about the emotional impact. How do you feel when you look at that drawing? How do you feel when you watch that movie, right? If you don't feel anything, then you don't like the movie. Same with art. There's a lot of very special paintings to me that have like very significant, you know, memories attached to them. And generally those are the ones that people tend to gravitate the most to and tend to you know, if it's in a gallery show, those are the ones that people buy the quickest. It's the ones that I don't want to let go the most. I don't know if you feel the same way, right? But it's like this thing that is kind of translated into the painting and people can really feel it. This one is about this, this old kind of creature here, dog kind of bear kind of thing, but he dons on the, the you know, the little speedos and the cape to, to make sure that his little buddy up here has a good time and has fun. And, and it kind of reminds me of my dad a little bit, I think, now that I kind of think about it, because he's always very serious, but he can, he'll do anything for his kids. Yeah. And then sometimes when you just don't know what to draw, you just keep drawing one kind of thing. I find, you know, so I just started drawing birds and birds and birds and birds and birds. And I liked it so much, I signed it, as you can tell. I'm so proud of it, you know. And then just more like flying stuff, because I drew all those other birds, these became birds. And this one's the bully, stole their worm. And these two are kind of like, nah, -uh, I'm not taking that. You can give me my worm back. And this is the psycho little friend that everybody has that's like little, but just crazy enough that people are scared of him. <laughs> like, I don't wanna fight that guy because I, I don't think he has any rules. He's gonna bite me probably. I'll probably have to get techno shots. And... So this one, the whole entire idea about it is to not work on how you appear, but work on how you are. You know, there's a big difference. This one symbolizes a mother's love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the kids are sucking the life out of this, this mom and like, well, hopefully not sucking the life out of the mom, but you can see like it's clinging on with their teeth. And in any other situation, it would be hurting her and she would be upset. But a mother's love is very strong and she, she doesn't care. You know what? I've never told anybody except for just a few close friends but I'll tell you guys, because you know, this is what the video is all about. A lot of them, they reflect social aspects of things that I notice, aspects in society of, you know, like the person that's just too good, always trying to give, always giving, and letting other people take advantage of them. That's, that's pretty much this one. There's a lot of little symbolism things that I don't really talk about much either. The best kind of art is always like the art that when you delve into it a bit more, then you like start to understand more stuff about that artist, right? And it makes it even cooler. If you look back into a lot of my art, the ones that have the little mushroom guy, 
mushrooms to me symbolizes a different way of thinking, you know, because of those psychedelic mushrooms and things like that. It's kind of like symbolizing enlightenment or heading in the right direction, uh, thinking for yourself kind of thing. And, and then there's butterflies sometimes in my drawings. I don't want people to really realize right away, but I want them to feel it. And butterflies represent distraction. Because whenever you see a butterfly, all of a sudden everybody stops and they just, oh, look at the butterfly. <laughs> so a lot of times I'll put in the butterfly in there to symbolize different types of distractions in society, in the world. This bear, it's blind, but it has a third eye that hypnotizes frogs. He's building his army. And you can see the distractions, right? You can see the butterflies in there now, and now you understand even more of like, oh, that's the symbolism, you know? I think I started doing even more of this stuff ever since Pokemon came out. Because I never got into it, you know? But like, oh man, I would see like, you know, uh, employees going for Pokemons, and what are you doing? This is a meeting. You know what? It's like life is just way too short to live in your phone or live through the TV. And there's just more and more of that these days. And you got all these super smart people looking to distract you. I have a pretty like automatic thing that will kick in and just go, what the heck are you doing? Stay on the trail and you cannot fail. <laughs> I feel like people that can just be bored and be okay with being bored and just sitting there and just thinking about nothing or whatever, those are the people that are gonna rise to the top. <laughs> when I was a kid, I would watch the whole entire show or whatever with my brother, like, who's the killer? And just before they find the killer, I'd be bored and I'd change the channel. <laughs> All the time. And then I, I, I read something where it was like, people that constantly change the channel, for some reason that was like a good thing or something. That's the exact opposite of what we're talking about. <laughs> but I guess it means like you're not gonna get distracted by TV shows as much or something, I don't know. I was just drawing this guy, just like staring off. And uh, what's he staring at? I kind of imagine he's staring at the apocalypse. And then I just started drawing a duck, staring at the apocalypse, and another friend, and then this little, this little guy knows what's up and he's scared. And these guys are all just waiting for it all to end. Well, he, he doesn't have it all together. And isn't that the same with society? <laughs> like some people just don't have it all together and they'll do like, they'll go towards total, total bad choices. I don't know what this is. You know, sometimes I don't really sketch the whole entire thing. I just kind of focus on this one. I was thinking that this guy was going to kill this big beast, but it kind of make, looks like it's about to just go doggy style on something. <laughs> so I just kind of stopped. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times, if I have no idea, I'll just start with a circle, see what happens. You know, maybe the circle turns in a triangle or whatever, but Usually I, you know, I'm very about efficiency and stuff like that, order and, you know, just cause I don't feel like I have enough time to do the things I want to do. So everything is kind of like planned and calculated and stuff. And the rule is to not stop, not stop drawing. And maybe it'll become something kind of cool. I'm going to draw a little plant pe person for you guys. Yeah, for me, it's, it's totally like this initial stage. It's very much not about the technical aspects of the drawing. It's more like that emotional impact. So if I went to do a painting, then the composition would totally change because this is not like something that I'm thinking about. I'm just starting somewhere and just continuing it wherever I go. It's falling a little butterfly. What are you doing, buddy? Don't do that. You're getting distracted but it's too late, it's too late. And then, you know, maybe there's another guy here where it's like this older plant person and uh, it's gonna warn this other plant person, don't follow that butterfly. But he kind of has this crazy face. 
perhaps that symbolizes the homeless person on the side of the street that, that says all this conspiracy stuff that nobody believes. But maybe he really knows what he's saying. And nobody will listen. Homeless smart guy. Homeless smart conspiracy guy. You know, and, and the other plant people would either not listen to him or actually be scared of him. I don't know. Like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I'm very attracted to things that are strange, weird, that are presented in a, in a pleasing kind of way, even if it's dark or whatever. I didn't know why until like a lot of self-reflection later, later on, like 10 years later after I was doing a lot of this. I have an underbite, so as a child, I guess I felt like a creature. I feel like I'm well adjusted now, but um, you know, I feel a connection with strange and weird things and, uh, that are presented in a nice way. You know, like uh, Super Mario. It's strange, right? It's really weird. I love that. And so this guy has little mushrooms growing out of his head because he's enlightened. That's how you know he's telling the truth. And he's got like crooked posture and stuff. He can't help it. People have done experiments on him and now he's all messed up. And now he's trying to warn others. He's got multiple mushrooms because he's really enlightened. Mm. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> he really sees it how it is. <laughs> okay, so now everybody's going to think I'm some sort of conspiracy nut. Um, I don't like this part because it kind of looks like he's smiling or something. I gotta wiggle my way around here and just try to make a this mouth or something warning them. Like, ah, don't go there, don't go there. I don't know. I remember as a child, I would have little stories in my head and then I, I always wondered like, why am I thinking of these things, these stories, and you know, good thing I was, because now I'm kind of like in that business, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't find my way until I was like 20, 20 something, like, because before that I didn't, I, I kind of knew that art is supposed to be a hobby. Art is great, Bobby, good job. You know, it's great as a hobby. Go be a lawyer, business person, doctor, whatever. And so I never thought that that was an avenue I could take. It wasn't until I pretty much failed every class uh, I had in business school because I never went to classes and I would bring pastels to accounting and watercolor to statistics class and I would just paint and draw. I painted a cat for my accounting exam and then I left. And then I failed everything and, and my mom was like, I hope you know what you're doing because it looks like you're going to art school. You know, and that's kind of like when everything kind of turned around. I was like, oh, hell yeah. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to apply for the best, biggest, awesomest art school I could find, the hardest to get in. And, and I applied and then, and then I didn't get in. Oh boy. So I went to like a, a fundamentals kind of a course where you just pretty much needed to be, uh, I think like 70 and higher and you're in automatically, no portfolio. Sometimes I make little noises. Yeah. Don't go there. I'm warning you. I don't listen to music usually when I draw. A lot of times I'll put on an audiobook, something educational, so I could be extra efficient or nothing. And I just like pure silence. Yeah, I'm totally into a, a lot of audiobooks. I was listening to The Alchemist, you know, then I started just drawing travelers without even knowing about it, you know. And I like those too because then you can think back to where you were and what you're listening to and things like that. And so it's like, please don't. But he's stuck in the ground because he's so old and he's grown, grown roots into the ground. Ah, don't go there. I'm born in you. And so what is happening here? I don't, I don't know. Let's just do something. You know, maybe it's more brainless uh, critters. <laughs> that makes sense. And it's just, they're gonna be staring at the, the butterflies because they're all distracted. 
do you think about like, um, you know, how every decade has this kind of uh, image to it or whatever, like the 60s and the hippies and the 70s and disco. Do you ever think about like what the next decade is all about? So I have a theory about that. Yeah. The millennium is such a huge thing that it's a time to reflect. And that means all the stuff that we loved in the past is going to come up again. And that really helped me to kind of pick the projects that I want to work on because I would aim for, you know, remakes. You know, the biggest one being, for me, Alice in Wonderland with Tim Burton. Mm -hmm. And when he called, I was like instantly like, yup, that totally aligns with everything that I've been thinking about. Yeah. So anyways, now, <laughs> 2010 to 2020, what's that going to be about? It's going to be about heroes and legends. But why, right? It's because of social media. Oh, yeah. And how does that make sense? because social media pokes holes in every would-be hero of ours and shows them as mortals. And now we live in this age where we don't really have a hero anymore. We don't have like a Muhammad Ali anymore. Uh, we don't have like all these heroes that we would have had in the past because if they farted and somebody caught it, it's gonna be big news and everybody knows or anything like that and, and so nobody is looked at as that hero, that perfect person anymore. And that's why movies, the really popular ones, the stories that are gonna be really popular are gonna be all about heroes and legends because we're missing that. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So now when that's I look at projects, if it aligns with that, then I'm totally into it. Nice. Maybe just one more little mole or something. I don't feel like people think about stuff as, as much as they should anymore. If we have a question, we just Google it, right? And before, I remember, before the internet and everything, you would sit there and you would think about it. It's like, I don't know how to do that. I'm just gonna sit there and think about it, right? Try to figure it out. And it's really interesting because I was learning digital painting at that time, you know, um, Photoshop 3, and just trying to figure out how to make stuff. And then years later, because I got into the internet a little slower, uh, I realized that all these other people on the west side, they pretty much paint and draw similar to each other in ways where it's like full flow, right? I, I didn't do that, right? I, paint, I painted in a completely different way because I felt like the people that really delved into Photoshop and things like that in the very beginning, they weren't using Flow because it didn't exist. And then they taught another person, that person taught another person, they built on top of their own techniques and they went down that road. But because I didn't Google the stuff, there was no Google, I went down this road. And in the end, that makes the most kind of special changes and, and then, New ideas still happen, new you know, evolutions still happen, and advancements still happen. But most of the time, it's like uh, built on top of somebody else's thing. So it's like you look it up, what's the answer on Google? Okay, let's build on top of that. But how do you know that that's the right road to keep going, keep advancing down? Okay, let's just sign that. I just ruined your sketchbook. No, I'm sorry. No, you did not. Sometimes I'll think about what these uh, creatures would taste like and the kinds of dishes I would make out of them. It would have to be something special, you know, because it's enlightened. And maybe if I eat his brain, then I will be enlightened too. I think some good pasta would do the trick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>